My name is Gabriel Key, and I thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. I will be speaking about something that's very personal to me, on a professional, uh, very important to me on a personal and professional level, being a European-trained chef that's worked in the United States for a number of years, and now somebody who lives and works in DC trying to deal with food policy whenever he can get the chance. Um, I want to speak to you about how I feel that our country has lost a sense of place for food. So, basically, I think our country has lost its sense of place for food in our culture. And I mean that financially, I mean that intellectually, I mean that gastronomically, and I mean that historically and culturally as well. We have forgotten where food comes from, we don't pay a lot of attention to it, and this has ramifications that affects so many things. Right now in the United States, in the last 10 years, the percentage of food that's imported to the United States has over doubled. It started out, it was roughly 40, billion, 40 million 10 years ago, it's now more than 80 million. Uh, right now we have food deserts and urban cores in DC, Baltimore, Chicago, New York, you name it. That's basically where there's no access to fresh food and 7-Eleven is your best thing to a grocery store. A lot of kids, this is known, all economic classes, racial classes, whatever you want to talk about, they go to a grocery store and they think that's where food comes from. They don't associate food with coming from animals or plants, they associate with coming from plastic containers. And it gets disassociated. When you're buying food, you buy an apple. You don't think where it comes from. Did it come from Washington State? Did it come from Pennsylvania? You don't think about that. It's a green apple, it's a red apple. So what happens to the mystery of food processing? Well, when was the last time you thought about turkey? I mean, actual turkey. Like, was it grown? Where did it come from? You probably thought about it, well, it's Foster Farms in a box. That's probably where your thought was about. Is it local or is it not? That's a whole other debate. It's associated from history and culture. History and culture and food are intertwined. There are marriages that really shouldn't be separated, but they are in our current dialogue. You know, right now there's a lot of food, food illnesses that are associated with eating really rich foods because we have the habit of eating specialty dishes. Perception versus reality. I really can't say more than this. Most people think that this, the top picture is the perception, the reality, factory farming. The bucolic farm is dying in America, and it's because we don't eat a lot of food from the bucolic farm. And unfortunately, when we don't think about food and we lose its sense of place, we become lambs that are led around by the information that's being given to us by big companies. We don't have our own context to draw from the information, so we become dependent on the information that's given to us. And who gives us that information? The companies that are selling us the food. And most importantly, when we become very dissociated with the place of food in our culture, we associate, we, everything is associated by price. And when you associate by price, it's a commodity. There's a commodities market. It's called grain, corn, wheat. That's not the way I want to think about my food. And branding. Branding is a billion, multi-billion dollar industry. Brands are there to inform, persuade, convince, get the idea, to make you do something. It's not really giving you information for information's sake. Labeling, it's very valid, it's very important, but out of these, these three, how many people actually know which one of these is based on some sort of measurable standard? Unfortunately, it's the USDA one. 100% natural means nothing. It is a label that has no basis. And then there's a much bigger issue. When you, talk, when you lose a sense of place of food, you stop thinking about food, you stop thinking about where it comes from, you start eating more. You start, you're not really paying attention to what you're eating or how you're eating it. So there's obesity, there's nutrition health, there's access to food. You know, it's really bad if the only, you know, if you go into the urban cores in some places and Twinkies are the best thing to fresh food. And rural economic development, Baltimore, DC, this whole area is so rich in agricultural wealth. And I'm not just talking about food, I'm talking about fisheries, I'm talking about all these sorts of things. But we, when we don't think about where it comes from, we lose sense. So what can be done? Personally, I really wouldn't wait for the government to fix this. Remember the government, the debt debacle? Do you really want those same people to be fixing the food system? I don't. I think it comes down to the consumer. The consumer needs to take action. We have incredible power and we don't use it. So what can consumers do? First and foremost, ask questions. When you're going to the grocery store, if you're, wherever you're buying your food from, ask the person there, where did this come from? How fresh is it? You know, why is this special and that not? Ask them. What can producers do? Same thing as consumers, ask questions, but make sure to answer them. And really importantly, you get the information out there. Use Twitter, Facebook, Yelp, Food Network, anything. Get the information out there, share it. The more information that's shared, the more that's available, the more we can exchange information and know where our food comes from. There's a reality check too. I'm not one of those people that's gonna say every city has to survive on the file that comes from food that comes from five miles from Lisbon. We like strawberries in January, and you gotta balance your time and your interest versus what's realistically possible. This is my daughter, she'll be two in a few weeks. Now you understand why this is a really important issue to me. She is the life of my life, and I just can't do enough for her, but I also want her to understand where her food comes from, and I want that for every child in the world. It's so important. 
And on that note, this is if you have, want any foreign find information, please come and find me on the web. Even give, you know, track me down on Twitter. I'd be happy to share what I'm trying to do, and I hope that you share this with your friends. Thank you. Yeah.